I am so excited to be here with all of you, all of the students. And can I just tell you how excited I am that the Inland Empire is represented right here as well. <laughs> AB 469 is one of the bills that the governor is going to sign as well as Assemblymember Mark Berman's bill. I know that was the big one, but hey, ours is big too. It has to, it, what it has to do with is making sure that every high school senior fills out the FAFSA form or the California Dream Act application for financial aid. During the pandemic, we saw that there was an 11% decrease in FAFSA applications and a 45% decrease of California Dream Act applications. We can't have that because we know that for students that fill out the financial aid form, they are 62% more likely to go to college. We want to make sure those, door, those doors are opened. And I'm so grateful to all of you who have worked on AB 469. It was a second part of a two, part, um, two parts of bills. The bill prioritizes those students that need to have that, those doors open, including our undocumented, our foster youth, our, our homeless youth, everyone who needs to have the door open for them. And the bill was supported by some great organizations, beginning with Ed Trust West, Blue Educational Foundation, and can I say very specifically, Pastor Sam Casey and Dina Walker are one of our sc school. Mi Familia Vota, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, and our local school board members. There were so many people because you all recognize how important it is to make sure our students fill out those financial aid forms. Well, if 63% more students are going to go to college after filling that out, we've got to make sure we fill them out. So from now on, thanks to the governor's signature, every high school student is going to either fill it out, the, either the FAFSA form or the California Dream Act form, to open the doors for college. If they decide not to go to college, that's their decision. It's not because doors were closed for them. So I'm really excited to, to be here today to bring the Inland Empire into CSUN, and to make sure that all of our students are protected, that all those doors are open for every single one of them. Let me take my mask off, at least for the last photo, right? I'm excited that the governor's here with us, and that's why we're going on to the second part, because you know he's in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce my colleague now, uh, Assemblymember Mark Berman, my dear friend. My mistake. Let me introduce to you my colleague, Assemblymember Kevin McCarty from Sacramento, who is also the chair of Sub 2 of the Budget Committee in charge of school finance. Kevin McCarty. Thank you. We have a couple more opening acts, so uh, please, uh, uh, your, 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 your patience. Again, I'm Assemblymember Kevin McCarty. I certainly am proud to be a CSU alum, number one. Thank you very much, CSU. And I was a community college transfer student. So I know the maze to that is not always easy. So thank you for Assemblymember Berman for making it easier. And as Eloise Reyes mentioned, I do have the pleasure of chairing the budget committee overseeing school finance from little kids in preschool to K-12 to college. And I do want to say that this year, was the best year in the history of California investing in higher education in our UC and CSU and community college system. So, so with, our governor's, with our governor's leadership and the legislature, we were able to pass a budget that fully funds the CSU budget requests. I know Chancellor Castro and others asked for a lot. We fully funded that. And we said, you know what? We're going to go more. We're going to fund an additional 9,000 slots for your little sisters and brothers and cousins to go to CSU. We also put another $1 billion in our Cal Grant program to have a guarantee for community college transfer students. To expand the middle class scholarship and focus on a path to debt free college. And then my bill that I'm excited about, my other hat here today, the governor is going to sign my bill, 
AB 1377, focusing on student housing, because we know that housing is a big deal for college students. I don't need to tell you that housing is half of the cost of going to college. Not tuition, it's books and food and transportation, but housing is the big thing. So this year, we put in the budget a pot of $2 billion to fund expansion of housing for CSU, UC, and community colleges and access. And the bill the governor is going to sign today has a UC and CSU system help us plan for more housing down the road. So I want to thank the governor for signing that bill. And I want to recognize my champion and supporter of that bill. We're in his district today. That's Assemblyman Jesse Gabriel. Thank you, Jesse. So as the governor will note, this is the California comeback. Investing in higher education is important for upward mobility. But you know what else? For our economy. In order for us to thrive like we are doing today, we need one million more college graduates. You and you and you and everybody else in our community to get a college degree to help our state survive and thrive. So college is not just for upward mobility, it's for our future success. So onward to investing in college in California. Thank you. So with that, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, a senator from just south of here in the heart of Los Angeles, Senator Durazo. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you here. Uh, I want to thank Governor Newsom for today. He will be signing SB 330. And I want to thank the Los Angeles Community College District for their partnership in getting this legislation passed. This bill will give LA community colleges the tools to address housing crisis. Is that an issue among students? Housing crisis faced by community college students and the employees from those colleges. Right now, no community college offers low-income, affordable student housing. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to change that. With this bill, community colleges will be able to strengthen partnership with local entities, with nonprofits, and create and, uh, and um, operate long-term, long-term, affordable, on-campus housing options for students and for the people who work in those colleges. A majority of its rents will be restricted to low-income students and also available to those employees with low or moderate uh, incomes. Do you know that as many as 55% of community college students currently experience housing insecurity and 19% experience homelessness, outright homelessness during 2020. People, men and women should be able to focus on their jobs or their education and not worry about where they will sleep that night. But here we have, here we have community colleges who have either unused real property or facilities that have become too financially burdensome to operate. As of now, however, community college districts are extremely limited in their options on how to use the surplus land or their facilities. This bill will repurpose these uh, uh, into affordable housing development and provide relief to both students and the men and women who work in these community colleges. This innovative approach could be a model to be implemented at other community colleges in the state and eventually a system statewide. So with that, we aim to address housing for community college students, and it should be for all students. Thank you all very much. And uh, I want to introduce Assembly Member Mark Berman. What's up, CSUN? Let's start. I want to give. A, I want everybody to give a round of applause to yourself for the work that you did to get us where we are today, to get us to here with the governor signing these important bills. 
I am honored and so excited to join the governor, the lieutenant governor, the chancellor, the president, my colleagues, and students, most especially, to celebrate the signing of historic legislation that puts students first. Over the last five years, I've held hearings across California to discuss higher education issues, from Sacramento to Fresno to Riverside to Zoom. And when students discuss their experience with the transfer process, from community college to four-year university, their message was loud and clear. Transfer is broken. It's too complex, confusing, and difficult to navigate. Instead of being a clear path, it's a maze, and it's costing students time and money that they can't afford. We need to transform transfer, and thanks to Governor Newsom today, we will do just that. AB 928, the Student Transfer Achievement Reform Act of 2021, will reimagine transfer from the student perspective. It will remove barriers to the successful but underutilized associate degree for transfer and establish a single general education pathway that meets transfer admission to both the CSU and UC. All right. I was just talking with the chancellor about how this is wonky stuff. This does not fit on a bumper sticker. AB 1111 removes another transfer barrier by requiring comparable community college classes to have the same course number, reducing student confusion. I want to thank the co-sponsors of these bills, the Campaign for College Opportunity and Michelle and Jesse and their team, Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis, Cal State Student Association, UC Student Association, and the Student Senate for California Community Colleges. We also couldn't have gotten here without all of our supporters, including our host today, the CSU uh, and Chancellor Castro, some key community college leaders that spoke up for policy changes they knew would help their students, even if it wasn't popular among their peers, and especially the students who inspired the, these transformative changes that we're gonna make today. And thank you, Governor Newsom, for your leadership and student-centered focus. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce our governor, Governor Gavin Newsom. All right, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> but, but where'd you get all the money for this damn place? This thing's off the charts. I can't believe it. Uh, let me thank uh, all the remarkable leaders that spoke and gratitude to uh, the president and to so many of the faculty that are here, to each and every one of you for taking the time to be here and uh, to uh, members of the Senate and the Assembly, the Lieutenant Governor who serves on the CSU Board of Trustees, the UC Regents. Uh, this is a proud day. Uh, we are proud to be here because uh, we're trying to reconcile the fact that we haven't been investing in our system of higher education over the course of the last few decades. We frankly stopped investing in our lead. The world we invented, the master plan, is now competing against us. You can't rest on your laurels. It's a, it's a good lesson in life. If you don't invest in the future, you're not going to do very well there. And so we recognize that we have a lot to reconcile. We recognize our responsibility to each and every one of you and to all of us, each other. Because at the end of the day, there is no economic development strategy without a workforce development strategy. There is no equation to address the issue of income and wealth disparity unless we provide opportunities and create pathways to close those gaps. And so today, long-windedly, we're here in the spirit, not just of identifying the obvious and all the challenges and vexing problems we have, but real strategies and real solutions. We have the plan, and this year we have the money to get big things done. Now, I I've been saying this everywhere I can. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but I want to brag on all of you a little bit. Because <laughs> I know how hard the last couple of years have been, last 18 months. And there was a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety that we had, not only in terms of our own experience, particularly all the parents out there, but about our state. Folks were starting to question the dream. You know, I remind people all the time there's two dreams, the American dream and the California dream. No other state attaches itself to the dream. It's an interesting fact. But there was anxiety about the dream. You know, 
where more and more people or less and less people seen themselves in it. They feel they're being left behind. With COVID and all the anxiety and stress. It's been hard this last couple of years. But I want you to know how proud I am. I don't say this to patronize you. I say this as a guy who grew up in this state that's proud to represent the most diverse state in the world's most diverse democracy, that's proud to be here, CSU, proud to say this, thank you. Thank you for persevering. Thank you for not giving up on yourselves. Thank you for believing enough, not only in yourselves, but each other to be here today. Thank you for demanding more of all of us and thank you for your resiliency. This is a remarkable place, California. It's a remarkable place. And it's punctuated by the fact that California, at our best, celebrates, doesn't tolerate diversity, and reconciles all of the vexing challenges we have by owning them. We take responsibilities. We're not victim of fate. It's decisions, not conditions that will determine our fate in future. And so it's in that spirit of accountability and responsibility that I thank you for your resiliency and for your faith and for your commitment to the future of our state. And I'll just mark this moment because there's a reason we're making historic investments in higher education. It's because we had an historic budget surplus this year. Testament to your hard work, $80 billion. Eat your heart out, Texas. Eat your heart out, Florida. Eat your heart out, Tennessee. Eat your heart out, fill in the damn blank. California is back stronger than ever because of your resiliency. And so we're putting that money to use. We're investing in our conveyor belt for talent, the CSUs. We're investing in that conveyor belt to talent the community college, that front door for two-thirds of those that enter into higher education. We're investing in that conveyor belt for talent, the UC system. We're investing in each and every one of you. I have the privilege today of signing seven bills just because the legislative leaders are here, but there are dozens and dozens of other bills that we'll be signing in this space. $47.1 billion dollar unprecedented, historic budget for higher education in the state of California. Mark this moment, $47 billion. $2 billion to address, I mean, we always talk about tuition, but what about the damn full cost of attendance? You know, it's food and housing, $2 billion for student housing in this year's budget. That's a big damn deal. And all that anxiety, our, our homeless students, and talk about you know, remarkable folks, our dreamers, and homeless kids that are still going to school, working, your grit and your determination. Well, we have your back. This year, we're putting an unprecedented investment, hundreds of millions of dollars to support those students that do remarkable work each and every day. We're proud of the fact that we're doing more for California students, not just out-of-state students, by capping that enrollment as well. So we have more slots for in-state students for our in-state schools. We're proud of that. That was important. As parents, trust me, the number one complaint I get, why can't my kid get into the CSU? Why can't my kid get into UC? And so we're trying to reconcile that as well. So many good bills, making transfers easier, making sure you have easier access to quality, not just education, but student aid that makes that education possible, increasing that student aid uh, as a consequence of these investments across the board. You've heard everybody speak. You know what's in these bills, but I just want to thank all of you that made this possible. And that's why I just close uh, by just expressing my deep gratitude uh, to the legislative leaders. We're not sparring with each other. We're working partners. It's not closed fists any longer. It's open hands. It's a completely different dynamic. A legislature, an executive branch that want to get things done. And I said this yesterday with Kevin McCarty up there in Fresno when we were talking about our master plan for early education. And I'll say it here in celebration of the master plan for higher education. If you don't like the way the world looks, just think Washington, D.C. right now. Stand on your head and go local. 
remarkable things are still happening at the local level. They're certainly happening here in Southern California and the state of California. And so we are the antidote to that cynicism and that fear and that anxiety in our politics today. I'm proud of California. I'm proud to be Californian. And I'm proud to be governor of the great state of California, signing the seventh critical and important bills. Can I get the legislative leaders up here so we can sign this? And we'll move on. All right. I don't know which is which, so I'll just sign these things. And I will, I will hand them knowing, not knowing that uh, I may be handing the wrong office. But here we go. You don't, you don't want to take credit for it? I'm taking credit for all of it. You're taking credit for all of it. Michelle, thank you for all you're doing. Oh, this, this, this actually was mine. Well done. Well, what's, look at that. I got one right. And the final, final bill. There we are. That's seven of dozens. Of bills and factors. We're proud of you guys. Thank you for all your hard work. And uh, and now they're here to answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs> we're all done. We're just doing the photo. Okay, we're not going to take any questions. Anyway, one more, one last photo. All right, one more time. We'll just hold up the bills one more time. Can we get the cheerleaders with the pom poms in the air? Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Thank you, Northridge. We're honored to be here with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you.